Do you remember early in the pandemic seeing this, the BioVisor, this big, gigantic sort of uh, boy in the bubble outfit? It was iconic. It was crowdfunded, had great marketing, and it looked like it provided you a lot of protection, but it was kind of bulky and inconvenient. But compared to having no protection, because we just had cloth masks back then or leaky surgicals, and we didn't have these because there weren't enough of these even for healthcare workers. So this offered a lot of hope, and the price at $300 or so was a lot less than an industrial powered air purifying respirator. I always wondered if they actually worked. There were a lot of crappy projects going on at the time that you couldn't trust. And yet, this one's rather nicely made. Uh, the marketing was terrific. So it seems like this has a chance of actually being a functioning uh, powered air purifying respirator. But was it? Well, the reason why I'm questioning that is because it turns out that making powered air purifying respirators in any respiratory protection equipment is kind of tough and the details matter. So let's take a look at some of the odd details. Now, this is where the air comes out of the filtered blower, right here at this little white nozzle. There's also an exhalation vent with a fan that blows air out of it. And that's right here. Why, why would you do that? Why would you have the air come in and go out there? That's a very odd choice. Um, I, I don't know why they did that. And let's take a look at the way a powered air purifying respirator normally works. So here's a 3M TR300. This is one of the head tops available. Air comes in the back, goes over your face, and then it comes out a permeable uh, panel in the chin. So it's got a logical airflow. It doesn't just go out here and then come right back out in a vented fan back here. That, that wouldn't make any sense. So that makes me feel that um, maybe the people making the BioVisor knew a lot of engineering for something. I don't know, wetsuits, constructing, tents. I don't know what their expertise was. And it might even have been in respiratory protection. I don't know, but this is an odd choice. You can take a look at some other things. For instance, here's the uh, filter that goes on the back here. This is um, you know, about the same surface area as an N95 mask, which might seem like a reasonable amount, but Pappers normally have a lot higher airflow rate than an N95 because you're not just breathing in, you are continuously blowing air. And that airflow is designed to push air out the seals so that you don't have air coming in them that's not filtered. Uh, and there's a lot of seal to protect here. If you look at this thing here, it's gotta keep air out of all of this area here. Uh, to keep it from leaking in. And it has to have enough air pressure, enough air flow to do that. Whereas this doesn't have nearly as much, just this little thing here like that. So I don't know if it has enough air flow to do that. I want to know. I, I've always wondered if this thing worked because, you know, it is really nicely made and it is iconic. And I'd like to test some other vintage stuff if we get a chance, but Let's go on to some testing. We're going to test airflow and we're going to test the fit factor. And just for reference, I get a fit factor of about 200, which is 200 times cleaner in this mask. And I get better fit factors than that sometimes. A uh, surgical mask might have a fit factor of, eh, say, two to four. So two or four times cleaner. So where does this fall on uh, the range of protection between an N95 or anything else? I'm going to take a look in just a minute. Now let's take a look at the airflow coming into the BioVisor to see if it's giving us enough air to breathe and enough positive airflow to push air out instead of letting unfiltered air come in through the seals. So I've got a USB battery and I have a laboratory grade airflow meter. Uh, the USB battery power is great, although they probably couldn't get NIOSH approved with this because NIOSH approves systems and the whole system has to be reliable. So it would have to be a specific battery, not just any battery for compliance. Uh, let's go ahead and see what we're doing here. Uh, I've got the uh, on off button here. So at the first uh, flow rate. All right. And we're getting 12 liters a minute flow rate. 
at uh, second level, 15 liters of flow rate. And at the third level, we're getting 17 liters per minute of airflow. So how does the airflow from the BioVisor stack up against an industrial papper approved by NIOSH? Not so good. This airflow is one-tenth what is required for a NIOSH-approved loose-fitting papper, which is what this is, loose-fitting. Uh, you have to have 170 liters per minute of airflow, and this only has 17. So uh, that's not doing great. So next up, let's see how it actually tests. All right, so I've got the BioVisor on. It's not especially comfortable. It doesn't really fit over my shoulders. It's, uh, it's kind of flattening against my face a little bit. Not as roomy as you would expect. Let's go ahead and uh, turn on the battery. Okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn it up to the full airflow rate. And I'm gonna leave the vent fan unplugged for now. Well, uh, the scores are in, fit factor overall of seven. That is way less than an N95 gets. You have to get a, a, a 100 for an N95 to pass. This is not doing that. Well, the uh, BioVisor is a disappointment. For all of its bulk and innovation, its actual performance was subpar. You know, even though it's a pandemic item, um, I still expect it to be at least as good as what it was designed to replace or supplement since they weren't available an N95, and it's not. It's not performing at N95 levels, and uh, the bulk is just not justified by the performance. So let's see what a professional uh, papper looks like. So this is, this is it. This is a version that's just for particulates by 3M, the TR300, with just their simplest basic um, head top. This is smaller and lighter than the BioVisor. Um, so let's see what the performance is like in comparison. So as you can see, um, I've got as good or better visibility from this because the uh, face shield moves with me and I'm not carrying the weight of the battery and the blower on my shoulders. It's on my belt pack, so it's a lot lighter. So let's see what the performance is like. So the 3M performed very well, as you'd expect for a NIOSH approved respirator. Uh, a fit factor of 4,137 overall. That is uh, a lot more than seven, over 4,000 times cleaner inside versus seven times cleaner inside. The BioVisor was a really innovative attempt at providing protection and it did provide some protection, but not the level of protection a powered air purifying respirator should provide. And it didn't even provide as much protection as the N95s it was meant to supplement the ones that weren't available. So an interesting product, some protection. Um, now that it's kind of a relic, not worth pursuing um, unless you're going to maybe modify it. And we'll look at that in another video to see if we can actually make this work better.